Lewis holds one of the largest bonfire celebrations in the southeast of England, and in today's video, I shall relate the history of this day. So how did it all begin? Robert Catesby, John and Chris Wright, Robert and Thomas Wintour, Thomas Percy, Guido Fawkes, Robert Keyes, Thomas Bates, John Grant, Ambrose Rookwood, Sir Everard Digby, and Francis Tresham. These men had one plan that would have resulted in wiping out the entire English establishment in one night. The blowing up of the House of Lords in London and assassinating King James I. 416 years later, Britons continued to mark this day that almost saw the plot succeed to kill the monarch. It was the 5th of November, and under the House of Lords lay dozens of barrels of gunpowder. The plot would soon be discovered after an anonymous letter was sent on the 26th of October, 1605. The amount of gunpowder underneath would have reduced the House of Lords to dust, and those who were inside would have been vaporised in the instant. As soon as the plot was uncovered, the conspirators had fled. Eventually, eight conspirators were captured, including Guido Fawkes, and they were hanged, drawn, and quartered. Henry VIII was a supporter of the Catholic Church and its seven sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, confirmation, reconciliation, anointing the sick, marriage, and holy orders. The Pope had awarded the King the title Defender of the Faith. In 1528, English scholar William Tyndale wrote the book The Obedience of a Christian Man, and he argues that the king of his country should be the head of the church and not the pope. Tyndale uses this book to criticise the church, and accuses it of being more concerned with performing ceremonies than living by the laws set out by Christ in scripture. He believes the church should preach and not perform superstitious ceremonies like confession. The book was banned in England, but it was brought to the attention of the king, and it is believed to have influenced his decision to creating the Act of Supremacy, whereby the king became the head of the Church of England. The Act of Supremacy still stands to this day, and Queen Elizabeth holds the title of Supreme Governor of the Church. For the context of how significant the break from Rome was, it is on the same scale as Britain's departure from the European Union. The King's Law Chancellor, Thomas More, opposed the writings of Tyndale, and the Protestant Reformation. He opposed King Henry VIII's separation from the Church and the annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. He refused to recognise Henry as the supreme leader of the Church and did not take the oath of supremacy. More was subsequently convicted with treason and executed. It was reported that he said, I died the King's good servant and God's first, just before his execution was carried out. His successor, Thomas Audley, the first Baron Audley of Warden, who was formerly the Speaker of the House of Commons before becoming Lord Chancellor. He supported the King's annulment of his marriage and made him the instrument of the King's attack upon the clergy and the preparation of the Act of Supremacy. Upon the death of King Henry VIII in 1547, aged 55, his son Edward VI ascended the throne. He was urged to continue the work of his father in reforming the Church of England. His reign was short-lived, and by 1553, the king became ill with fever and a cough, and it gradually worsened. The imperial ambassador, Jean Schaefer, reported that he suffers a good deal when his fever is upon him, especially from a difficulty in drawing his breath, which is due to the compression of organs on his right side. He was able to make a few more public appearances before his condition deteriorated. On June 11th, 1553, it was reported that the matter he ejects from his mouth is sometimes coloured as greenish yellow and black, sometimes pink, like the colour of blood. His doctor believed he was suffering from a superating tumour of the lung and admitted Edward's life was beyond recovery. His legs became swollen and he had to lie on his back and lost his strength to the disease. His final public appearance was on the 1st of July, 1553 and he was described as looking thin and wasted. Edward would die on the 6th of July, 1553, aged 15. Before his death, he opposed Mary I ascending the throne, knowing she would undo the work of the English Reformation, and he would return England to the Catholic Church. 
In July of 1553, Mary ascended the throne against the wishes of her predecessor Edward VI, and having overthrown Lady Jane Grey, who was queen for all of nine days. Unlike him and her father, Mary I was a devout Catholic, just as her mother was Catherine of Aragon, and set about undoing the work of her father to restore the faith to England. She had Protestants killed as heretics, and there were 300 burnings of Protestants. In Spain, the burnings would be over quickly due to their climate. However, in a cold and wet England, the burnings would take two hours, and it would be a slow and agonising death. History would dub her Bloody Mary. She was faced with many obstacles in her effort to reverse England's reformation, and found herself, ironically, being the head of the Church of England whilst believing in the supremacy of the papacy. Mary was queen to prevent her Protestant half-sister Elizabeth from ascending to the throne and wanted to make sure that she could produce her own heir. She married Philip II of Spain, a Roman Catholic, who had previously married Maria Manuela of Portugal who died in 1545 and would go on to marry two further women after Mary I, Elizabeth of Valois, who died in 1568, and Anna of Austria who died in 1580. In 1554, it was believed Mary I was pregnant, having stopped menstruating, gained weight and felt sick in the morning. It is believed that Philip may have been planning to marry Mary's half-sister in the event of Mary's death during childbirth, but in a letter to his brother-in-law, Maximilian of Austria, Philip expressed uncertainty as to whether his wife was actually pregnant. In 1557, Mary believed she was pregnant once again, and the child would be expected in March of 1558 but no child was born. She was forced to accept that her half-sister Elizabeth would become the lawful successor. A year later, Queen Mary was weak and in pain from suspected ovarian cysts or uterine cancer. She died on the 15th of November 1558, aged 42, during an influenza epidemic. On the 17th of November 1558, Elizabeth's reign began, and her coronation was held on the 15th of January 1559. With Elizabeth on the throne, the English Reformation was a done deal, and Protestantism was set to be the religion of England. She was forced to accept the title of Supreme Governor of the Church of England, as opposed to the title of Supreme Head. In 1559, the new Act of Supremacy became law on the 8th of May 1559, and all public officials were to swear an oath of loyalty to the monarch or risk being disqualified from office. Simultaneously, the Act of Uniformality was passed, which made attendance to church and to the use of the adapted version of the 1552 Book of Prayer compulsory. Penalties for recusancy, failure to attend and conform was not so extreme. The build-up to the gunpowder plot would soon begin during the reign of Elizabeth I, and in 1569, a Catholic uprising in the north of England commenced. The goal of the uprising was to free Mary Queen of Scots, marry her to Thomas Howard, the fourth Duke of Norfolk, and put her on the English throne. The uprising would end in January of 1570 with an Elizabethan victory and strengthened her authority and weakened the aristocracy of the North. In February of 1570, Pope Pius V declared Elizabeth I a heretic and she was consequently excommunicated by the way of a papal bull, an order. This order liberates Catholics from any loyalty to the Queen and called upon them to have her removed from the throne. However, the Pope overestimated his influence over the Catholics in other countries, who preferred to worship in secrecy than to cause any trouble with the Protestant authorities. The actions of the Pope made life for Catholics in England a lot worse when Parliament passed a series of acts in 1571 to protect Elizabeth from the papal bull. It became treason to say that Elizabeth was not the Queen of England and Wales, and that it was illegal for anyone to bring a papal bull into England and Wales and carry out its orders. Elizabeth's persecution would eventually push a group of Catholics to create a plan so daring it would be remembered for centuries to come, and marked upon every year of its anniversary. The gunpowder plot was devised by Robert Catesby, who was born around 1572 in Warwickshire, England, and he was an out and proud Catholic despite Elizabeth I's persecution of the faith. Catesby was a lineal descendant of William Catesby, the influential counsellor of King Richard III, who was captured at the Battle of Bosworth and executed. 
His father suffered greatly under the rule of Queen Elizabeth and spent many years in prison for his faith, as well as being fined so heavily for not submitting to the Church of England that his family's wealth dwindled. It was said that Catesby was inspired by the Essex Rebellion in 1601 against Queen Elizabeth I and the court faction led by Sir Robert Cecil to gain further influence in court. The plotters of this rebellion suggested seizing the court, the Tower of London and the city and for the Queen to change leaders in her government. It was led by Robert Devereux, 2nd Earl of Essex and it was planned to take place on the 8th of February 1601. He led his followers of around 200 people to St Paul's Cross, an open air pulpit, on the old St Paul's Cathedral and expected the Lord Mayor to be in attendance. Sir Robert Cecil, the first Earl of Salisbury and the Lord Privy Seal had warned the Lord Mayor and he and the Heralds denounced Essex as a traitor. At this moment, Essex's support collapsed as people fled upon hearing the word traitor and Essex fled to Essex House. After burning incriminating evidence, he surrendered to the Queen's men and he was placed under arrest. On the 28th of February 1601, Essex was beheaded in the Tower of London. Before the death of Queen Elizabeth I, Robert Percy, a future plotter with Robert Catesby, wrote to Scotland to meet King James VI on gathering support for English Catholics. The King was a Protestant, but his mother was a Catholic, and it is thought that this would lend sympathy to the persecuted Catholics in England. Percy was under the impression that the King would show his support for Catholics, and once the Queen did die, James VI of Scotland would be now King James I of England. He removed fines that had been imposed during the reign of Elizabeth I. However, King James quickly reversed this decision, and the persecution started once more. Not only this, King James warned Catholic priests to leave the country or risk being hunted down. This was the last straw for Robert Catesby and his hatred for King James reached a point where he believed that James should die. In 1604, Catesby held a meeting to discuss the plan to blow up the House of Lords and re-establish Catholicism in England at the Duck and Drake pub. With Thomas Wintour, a scholar who spoke several languages, Thomas Percy, Jack Wright and Guido Fawkes, the plotters swore an oath of secrecy and the men were blessed by a Catholic priest and unlikely to have known what he was doing it in aid of, Catesby would list others into the group. Robert Keyes, Thomas Bates, John Grant, Ambrose Rookwood and Sir Everard Digby and Francis Tresham who is believed to have sent the anonymous letter to William Monteagle and foiled the plot to the authorities. The responsibility of the gunpowder was with Guido Fawkes, a military man who was an expert with explosives and he knew where to source it. Gunpowder was plentiful in the 17th century as it was needed for warships and merchants needed it to defend themselves. Fawkes sourced his powder from a manufacturer in Rotherhive that operated under royal license, 30 minutes down the River Thames where the plot would have been carried out. In all, 36 barrels were acquired and stored in the room rented by Thomas Percy. The target date for the plot was the state opening of Parliament in December of 1604, but it was cancelled and it was moved to the winter of 1605 and brought plotters a new problem, gunpowder decay. Robert Catesby conceived a second stage to this plot, a full Catholic uprising in the Midlands, and so he travelled there to seek recruits for his new scheme. The second stage would be initiated once the gunpowder had obliterated the House of Lords and everyone inside. This group of men would be cavalry in disguise of a hunting party who would show their true colours once the first stage had been achieved. They would ride to Coventry and kidnap eight-year-old Princess Elizabeth, King James's eldest daughter. They would groom her into being a Catholic and install her on the throne as a puppet monarch. The end goal would be full-on civil war between the Protestants and Catholics. Catesby's good luck saw Thomas Percy acquiring the storage room directly below the House of Lords and during the summer of 1605, the plotters discreetly moved the gunpowder from Percy's lodgings and into the cellar. In October of 1605, the gunpowder was set and disguised to deter suspicion. Catesby needed more money and approached the final member of the plotters, Francis Tresham. He was reluctant to allow the plot to take place and his reluctancy was probably the key factor that could have forced him to send the letter to William Monteagle, the brother-in-law of Tresham. The letter said, My lord, out of the love I bear to some of your friends, I have care of your preservation, therefore I would advise you, as you tender your life, to devise some excuse to shift your attendance at this parliament. 
and God and man hath concurred to punish the wickedness of this time, and think not slightly of this advertisement, but retire yourself into your country, where you may expect the event in safety. For though there be no appearance of any stir, yet I say they shall receive a terrible blow this Parliament, and yet they shall not see who hurts them. This counsel is not to be condemned because it may do you good, and can do you no harm. For the danger is past as soon as you have burnt this letter, and I hope God will give you the grace to make good use of it, to whose holy protection I commend you. The letter was taken to Robert Cecil in Whitehall by Monteagle, and he in turn informed the Earl of Worcester, who suspected Catholic Henry Howard, the first Earl of Northampton. The King was not shown the letter until the 1st of November, and he seized upon the term, blow, and felt that this related to gunpowder and violence. On Monday the 4th of November, Lord Chamberlain Thomas Howard, the first Earl of Suffolk, undertook a search of the Houses of Parliament above and below ground. They came across a man who called himself John Johnson, and when he was challenged on why he was there with a pile of firewood, he replied, It belongs to my master. The second search was sent back to the Undercroft, where the guards challenged John Johnson, led by Thomas Knivet, and arrested him. John Johnson was the plotter Guido Fawkes and the plot to blow up the House of Lords was foiled. Upon the news of Fawkes' arrest, the plotters fled London. Thomas Winter was still in London, and even went to Westminster to see what was happening. Upon the discovery the plot had been rumbled, he took his horse and made for his sister's house in Norbrook, and then continued to Huddington Court. In London, an arrest warrant was issued for Thomas Percy and his patron, the Earl of Northumberland, and was placed under house arrest. Guido Fawkes was interrogated by authorities and said nothing about the plot and who was involved, and insisted that he was the only one to create the plan to blow up the House of Lords. Catesby insisted that the cause was not lost, and wanted to continue a Catholic insurrection and wrote to the Midlands. Upon his arrival, Catesby realised that he had lost support except for a few loyal plotters by his side. Robert Keyes abandoned them and went alone. Fawkes finally cracked under torture and revealed the details of the plot and who was involved. Catesby and Percy made their way to Holbeck House, but the authorities were not far behind them. A firefight ensued, and he, Percy, John and Christopher Wright were shot. Catesby died cradling the statue of, of the Virgin Mary. The remaining conspirators were all captured, and they were hanged, drawn, and quartered for treason. Francis Tresham died of an inflamed urinary tract, which worsened and his health declined. He died at 2am on the 23rd of December, 1605. The tradition of lighting a bonfire on the 5th of November started on the very same night of the plot, in 1605, and has continued ever since. The Puritan Oliver Cromwell, who became Lord Protector of the Commonwealth of England, Scotland and Ireland from December 1603, and would ban Christmas, Easter, the theatre, bear baiting, amongst other things, would allow the November 5th bonfires to continue 